All right, so uh, this is problem set number two, and uh, we'll be primarily fo primarily focusing on curvilinear kinematics. <clears throat> so meaning we're going to be talking about more on a combination of horizontal and and vertical movement. We're going to be talking about relationships between uh, tangential and normal acceleration. And of course, uh, solving equations such as uh, velocity, displacement, acceleration as represented with the uh, given, given as an equation of a line. So here are the type of problems we're going to be encountering, or, 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 or rather, should I say, um, uh, you've encountered, and hopefully you went through the notions of really solving them. And uh, if not, hopefully you were able to find an answer and able to discuss this among uh, your peers, your classmates. So uh, I understand the problem sets here are not uh, positioned uh, in order, so I'm just going to go over with 12-16 first. Okay. So with 12-16, we're given here a particle that is traveling along a straight path. If its position along the x-axis is x equals a t meters, where t here is in seconds, determine its speed when t is equals to 2 seconds. So we're here to find out what's the uh, the, the speed or the, the, the velocity at 2 equals to 2 seconds. So we can write down the given as such. Okay. Right. We're also given a y here of 0.75x, by the way, so based on the graph. So I just put it down there just, just, just so we don't miss it. So for the solution here, so recall our equation on regarding velocity and uh, on curvilinear kinematics. And of course, with our previous uh, discussion last uh, last term regarding the magnitude. So when when... When it, when uh, when the problem is asking what the speed here, and we're talking about curvilinear kinematics, we recall that there's an x and y component since where the motion of the particle here both has an x component and a y component. So which means this one is has a magnitude, which means that we need to consider both the x moment, the horizontal and the vertical component. So if you recall, the magnitude of the velocity here will be equals to the square root of the sums of squares of its x and y components, basically. So that will be square root vx squared plus vy squared. Okay. Also recall, um, where vx here is simply the first derivative of position, or simply dx over dt. The same goes for the vy. We can represent it as y prime, dy over dt. So let's start with vx first. <laughs> So, by the way, this is another uh, another notation, at which I think this is the Newtonian uh, notation, calculus notation. We, we are used with the Leibniz notation of using dx, dt, okay? So, this one has a, uh, usually it's a colon, a, an apostrophe, uh, or, 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 or a dot on top of the letter, but that's the Newtonian notation. Naman. Okay, so let's start with the vx first. So substituting the known equation for our x here, so dx here is 8t, so x here is 8t, so that will be the derivative of d dt, 8t. So that will be 8 meters per second, easy, easy enough. As for vy, all we have to do is just substitute dy here, so that's going to be 0.75x here, so 0.75x. And here it's going to be, we're just, simpli we're just simply simplifying the equations here. So y is equals 0.75x, where x is also equals to 8t. So that will be 0.75at equivalent to y equals to 60. So now it so now it is in terms of time. So instead of position x, so that our derivation or our derivative uh, uh, derivative will be a lot more smoothly. So that we can now convert this to dy dt. So now dy here, our y here is 60. So that will be 6 meters per second. And all we have to do is just substitute them into this equation. And we will get 10 meters per second. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Next problem. So here, Naman, uh, we have a particle. And it's constrained to travel along the path. So this is the path. A very curvilinear path. So we're given the equation of the line here. at uh, So if x is 40 to the 4th meters... Uh, where t is in seconds, determine the magnitude. So we're being asked here the magnitude of the particle's velocity and acceleration. So we're being asked the two requirements. So uh, the magnitude of the velo particle's velocity and the acceleration. 
when t is equals to 0.5 squared. So take note, there's a this equation of the path of the line here is equals to y squared equals to 4x. So remember, we're using the particle is, uh, has a horizontal and vertical component, so we have to solve for both first. So we write down our given just like so, and our requirements. So we need the magnitudes of velocity and acceleration here. So for our solution, uh, so let's just write it down. Uh, again, remember the uh, the uh, to, to get the, the magnitude using its components. So all we have to do is just get the square root of the sums of the squares of its respective x and y components. So in this case, v equals the square root vx squared plus by squared. The same goes for acceleration here, the magnitude of acceleration. And also, if you, you know, if you really want to write down your equation, so there's no problem with that. So again, vx is also the first derivative of displacement, which is also equal to dx over dt, which is basically the change in position along the horizontal a horizontal path divided by its change in time. Uh, same way goes with Vy. Vy here, on the other hand, is y, uh, y prime, which is the uh, change in position with respect to the uh, vertical motion. Uh, now with the acceleration being the first derivative of our velocity for respective x and y. So next up, so for let's start with the velocity first. So we can we already have equations for x, so that's a lot easier. So let's start with vx. We simply substitute 4t to the fourth here, and we will have the derivative of 4t to the fourth as 16t cubed. There we go, meters per second. And as for the y, uh, we have here is y squared equals to 4x, where our x is equals to 4 to the fourth. So we're going to express y in terms uh, to time, t. So we have that, and then all we have here will be square root of 16 t to the 4, which will give us as y equals to 4 t squared. So find a derivative of that. We will have 8 t meters per second. Okay, and with that, we can now get the magnitude of velocity at t equals to 0 0.5, and we will have it just like so. All we have to do is just substitute 0 0.5 seconds here to the respective equation, so that's going to be 16.5 q, and then, you know, square both sides, uh, square this, then plus 8 times 0. 0.5, and then we're going to square that and find the square root. So we'll have about 4.4721 meters per second, or 4.47. Next, with the uh, acceleration, all we have to do is just get the first derivative of velocities in the x and y component. So here we go. Done. So we will have uh, 48 t squared meters per second squared, and we will have 8 meters per second squared. Uh, I forgot the t here. Yeah, there should be a... There should be a t here. There we go. Almost forgot that. Okay. And then next, and uh, all we have to do is just plug it into this equation. And we will get A is equal to 14.422 meters per second squared, or 14.42. Okay, next up, here we have a uh, guy uh, playing basketball. And uh, we need to determine the speed at which the basketball at A must be thrown uh, at the angle of 30 degrees so that it makes it to the basket at point B. So this is your usual projectile our problem. So let's just uh, write down our givens here. We know that we have a uh, initial position uh, from x a to b at 10 meters or at x b at 10 meters. So that's going to be positive. We also have y b at uh, 3 meters and uh, we also have y a at 1.5 meters. Okay, so this is our point origin here. And we have an angle of 30 degrees. It's kind of the same thing if it's coming from here either way. So we're here to find out what's the velocity at point A. So let's write that down. Recall that we have several equations such as this. Given our variables, we know we already have positions on both sides, horizontal and vertical. So we can definitely take advantage of that. Given our equations, the final position equals to initial position plus initial velocity uh, times time. So that will be our equation one. We also have this particular equation. Final equals to initial position plus VIT plus AT squared over two. Okay, so we can now substitute a given our known values here. So we can try solving for total time traveled using the equation 1. 
There we go. Actually, we don't have to, but uh, we're setting up our equation now. So xb equals to xa plus bat. So we know that our initial position at point A is going to be zero meters. VA here is, is uh, at an angle, so that's going to be VA cosine 30 degrees for our X component. And then for YB, uh, this will be our second equation, so it's going to be YB equals to YA plus VA sine 30 for the Y component of the VA uh, times T plus AT squared over 2, where A here is 9.8066 uh, or 7, I forgot. So the next here is that we are going to substitute the from equation 1. So that's going to be t equals to 10 over va cosine 30. And we're going to substitute that to our equation 2. So I pretty much did the long way, but uh, uh, as long as you did the math, the, the math right and you know do some proper cancellation, you should be able to get the proper answer. So, okay, substituting them properly, we'll have this particular equation. Then, of course, this... Uh, uh, VA, VA here will cancel out. So that's going to be, there we go. And then sine 30 over cosine this tangent 30. And then we are left with minus 9.8066 divided by 2 times 10 over VA cosine 30. And then, of course, we're going to square that. That's because that's T squared. Okay. So all we have to do now is just simplify the equation. Okay. We isolate VA and we will have 12.3686 meters per second or simply 12.4 meters per second. Okay, um, next up, another projectile motion, but instead there's a, there's a, there's a, it's going to go beyond its original uh, launching point. So we have point A here and point B. So we have a projectile. It's fired with an initial velocity of 150 meters per second at point A. And it has the, um, it has this uh, ratio. So I, uh, I hope you still remember how to utilize them. You can still you can find the angles freely, and but you can use uh, this ones instead as a fraction, so uh, you don't have to do much calculations. So, okay, so determine the range R. So here our maximum range from point A to point B, where it strikes the ground. Okay, so we know several things. So we're gonna write down our given. We know that our initial velocity is one fifty. We know that our y uh, the position at the, the vertical position at point B, so we're talking YB, is going to be negative 150 meters. What's required here is XB, so that's our horizontal position. That'll be the range, so we're going to label it R. Okay, so those are interchangeable, okay? Uh, what else do we know? We know that we have a... We need the time, we need the total time travel here, okay? And uh, we have some velocities here, okay? So we can make use of our solution of SF equals to SI plus VIT plus AT squared. Now we need to solve R. We need to find the total time traveled, TAB, or call it TAB. So in this case, uh, we're going to be able to solve that before we solve first the range. So we're going to utilizing the Y component since we pretty much at this position, it's going to be YA equals to zero. So we're going to rewrite the equation just like so. So YB equals to YA plus VATAB plus ATAB squared, where G here is negative 9.8066 meters per second squared. Okay, and now we're going to, you know, substitute our known value. So YB is negative 150, YA at point A is 0. And then, of course, uh, our VA, the vertical component of VA here is going to be VA 3 over 5 meters per second. So that's going to be 90 meters per second. So for simplification, same times TAB. And of course, substitute our negative uh, acceleration due to gravity. That will be negative 9.8066 um, divided by 2. And then, of course, TIB, TAB squared. Um, now, further arranging the equation, we will have this. Then I think I was able to solve this by quadratic formula using the and chose 19.89 seconds. The other equation doesn't make sense. Eh? Okay. All right, next. Um, so that'll be the total time traveled here is 19.89 seconds by a quadratic formula. So by a quadratic formula. Next up is this one. So we're not going to be able to solve for R. Uh, this time we're going to be using the horizontal components and we're going to be using this formula, a lot simpler one. The X final position equals to initial position plus VATAB. 
So in this case, our XA, we know that's going to be zero. We know that we already have VA for the horizontal component. So that's going to be 150 four over, uh, times four over five. We already have TAB at 19 seconds. So we just kind of substitute everything here and cancel, cancel. And we will have the answer at 2.39 kilometers. Okay, there you have it. Next up is we have a boat here. And uh, the boat is traveling along the circular path with a speed of 0 0.0625 t squared meter per second. So our velocity is expressed as an equation of a line here. And then um, where t is in seconds, we're, and we're here to determine the magnitude of its acceleration when t is equal to 10 seconds. Okay, so this is part of the curvilinear uh, kinematics where we need uh, to consider the radius of curvature. We need to consider the, the tangential acceleration. And we need to consider the normal acceleration. So let's proceed. So let's just label our given now, So we have a velocity here, 0 0.0625 t squared meters per second, where t is seconds. We also argue, we have a 40 meters here, which is also the radius of curvature. I hope you remember, remember your notes. And we're here to determine the magnitude of this acceleration at t equals 10 seconds. So as for our solution, uh, let me write down some uh, known formulas first. Recall that the magnitude for acceleration, when using the tangential, that is for on a curvilinear path, instead of the x and y components, since, since the, the path of the boat is at a cur cur uh, circular path, so we're going to be using the square root of the, of, the, uh, of the sums of the squares of the tangential and normal acceleration, just like so. And also, uh, recall that the tangential acceleration is also the first derivative of velocity. And the normal acceleration is, is, or parallel acceleration is simply the quotient of uh, velocities squared over its radius of curvature. Okay, so... Let's solve the components of this equation one by one. So for tangential acceleration, we simply get this one, the derivative of 0 0.0625t squared, and we will get 0.125t. Now at 10 seconds, we just simply substitute that. So at here will be 1.25 meters per second squared. That's one. For an, we just simply get the square of uh, our velocity here. And divided by its 40 meters. So all we have to do is just do that. <laughs> and then substitute at 10 seconds. And we will have a perpendicular. Uh, we have a, uh, a normal acceleration of 0.9766 meters per second. Or so to speak, a parallel. So now we're going to be able to solve for our magnitude, which is AT squared plus AN squared. And we will have the final answer of 1.59 meters per second squared. All right, we have two more problems and before we are done. So we have one more. So here we have a car that decelerates uniformly along the curve road from 25 meters per second at point A to 15 meters per second at C. Now we're here to determine the acceleration at, of the car at point B. So in a way, it's kind of like the uh, the magnitude of, the magnitude of acceleration at point B. So let's just provide a given now, Mona. We know very well at point P, the radius of curvature for this particular curve is going to be 300 meters. So we put it that way. We know our positions from point A to point B being 250 meters. The total position at point C, that's going to be 300 meters. We know our initial position is going to be zero. And our initial um, initial velocity at point A, that's going to be 25 meters per second. We know that it decelerates and with a final speed of 15 meters per second at point C. What is the uh, what is the acceleration at point A? So we also have the unknown here. We need to find also the velocity at point B. So again, recalling the equation. So we're, we're going to be using this several equations here. We know that Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A delta S, where delta S is SF minus SI. Okay, in this case, uh, we're here, be, here going to be able to determine... Uh, hopefully the velocity first. So, and then at point B, 
So we need the acceleration at point B. You know? So it's gonna be the square root of its the ta, the square of its tangential acceleration and normal acceleration. Okay, and then the, where our whereas a normal acceleration at point B is equal to v squared b uh, divided by its radius of curvature b. So essentially, we need the velocity at point B. So to solve for that, um, we need we need the total acceleration first, or in, in effect, it's a tangential acceleration. So we're able to get that by using this equation first. So we equate it based on our parameters theta. So it's going to be Vc squared equals to Va squared plus At, or tangential, Sc minus Sa. So uh, uh, rearranging the formula, we will have this one. And substituting them, when canceling the, the, the units, we will have a tangential acceleration of the negative 0.66 six seven meters per second squared as for our velocity we can get that by uh, a to b so we can use the same equation so we have vb squared plus vi2 squared uh, plus plus uh, 280 sb minus sa so in this point a to point b we're going to achieve the tangential uh, the tangential acceleration here is going to be a constant acceleration renaman Okay, so we're going to be able to determine VB as 17.0778 meters per second. And now we're now able to solve. There we go. We're now, we can now solve for the acceleration at point B. So we're going to be solving for ATV and A and B. ATV is AT. That's going to be negative 0.6667 meters per second squared. Whereas A and B is going to be VB squared over radius of curvature, just like so. And the result is 0 0.9722 meters per second squared. And all we have to do is just substitute to our magnitude equation for acceleration, just like so. And we will have 1.18 meters per second squared. Okay, there you have it. So that's pretty much for our problem set two. And uh, hopefully you were able to understand the lesson. And... Uh, if you have, uh, if you don't, if you're having a hard time, just feel free to review the recording and uh, ask me personally during our sessions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.